Hey everybody, my name's Yvonne. I'm a reporter here at the LA Times and joining us today is Mark Paul Gosler and we're going to be talking about his new NBC comedy, Truth Be Told, which premieres this week. It does on Friday. On 8 Friday, 30, 8 NBC. 30. See how good I am at that? You're really good at uh, it. I feel very grand, Yvonne. I'm not going to tell you, you like sitting we, in this we chair. We try to go for the Oprah feel. Yeah. Do you feel like you're on Oprah? I where to put my hands. Do I put it like this? <laughs> we're going to have an aha moment today. Like, I feel my it. My Lincoln look here. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for joining us on Thanks this hot, me. hot, hot day. Well, it's not too hot because I'm wearing a sweater. <laughs> I know, and, we're all uh, wearing sweaters. A tie. I'm, I'm, I'm like, we're screw pretending the weather. it's fall here. Screw the weather. I'm dressing for fall. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so, we want to talk about your new series. Um, I guess we could sort of backtrack and, you know, after Franklin and Bash ended, what were you looking to do or were you looking to take a break for a while and this just sort of popped up or? No, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm never looking for a break. I love to work. Um, one of the only uh, negatives about Franklin and Bash was that we only did 10 a year mm -hmm. of that show. Um, and I'm a working actor. I love to be on set. I love to be creative. So 10, I was unemployed for most of the year because uh, a lot of people don't realize is that when you're on a show, you're exclusive to that right, show. Right. You may be able to do a couple guest starring, but for the most part, you are... Locked, in. uh, locked into a show. So network television uh, suits me. I love to do 22 or more episodes mm -hmm. a year. Uh, and this was sort of the direction that I was looking in. I wasn't sure if I was going to do comedy or drama. Mm -hmm. uh, really, it's, it's the work. It's the, the, the quality of the work that, uh, that points me in um, either direction. Mm -hmm. And so when you get this script, what sort of appealed to you? Um, it's, it comes from DJ Nash. DJ Howard, Nash yeah. is the creator. Will Packer is uh, executive producer, along with Pam Fryman, mm -hmm. um, who's most well known for How her I work met. on How I Met Your Mother for all those years. So this show, uh, our crew, to give you a little backstory, our crew uh, that works with us on a daily basis, they are the crew from How I Met Your Mother. So we have a very seasoned crew. Mm -hmm. Pam is amazing. I wouldn't want to do this show with anybody else uh, except for her. And then DJ, uh, this show is created with his life inspired throughout. Uh, his wife is, is Asian, mm -hmm. which is why it was very important for my character, Mitch, mm -hmm. to have an Asian wife who's played by Vanessa Lachey, uh, who's ethnically ambiguous, which <laughs> right. we bring up in the show, which okay. is fun. So we have, a, yeah. we have some fun with uh, her ethnicity. Um, and then our, our neighbors are uh, a black couple, recently married, no children, uh, which is uh, sort of true to DJ's life. His friend is black and, and, uh, and, and a lot of topics that we talk about that friends talk about. Mm -hmm. And when you're in an environment where you, you're loved by your friends and you feel supported, you can have these conversations and not no feel... No filter. No yeah. filter and not feel like you're going to be judged based on your diverse opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how was that for you? I mean, did you go to DJ and were you kind of like, no, um, no. how do I set this foundation? Or do you start from scratch? Do you have no, a discussion? Uh, we, I mean, because this is DJ's life, mm -hmm. um, or inspired by his life, we don't want to get sued by anybody, but <laughs> because it's inspired by his life, they're very clear. He's. Ve I've never worked with a showrunner who is he knows what the last episode of the finale already will be. already like he he said to us would you want to know what the finale is and I, of course we're in eight episodes in we, I none of us wanted to know no? we, we don't want to know how it ends um, better than me I would be like tell me now yeah but what if you're disappointed oh that's true yeah I guess yeah. Yeah. If, if you go like well that's the finale <laughs> oh man I'm not gonna work I'm gonna work I'm gonna so hard for now. Yeah, I'm gonna coast through this yeah now. Uh, but uh, he, he's, he has the blueprint and the structure. Everything has been thought out, and he knows um, every story that we're gonna that we're gonna hit and, and, and uh, discuss on the show. So, um, yeah, I've, I've never walked in onto a role where everything has been laid out as, as clearly as it is with this with this mm -hmm. character. Mm -hmm. And does does he give you notes then? Absolutely, like, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I've never, and that's another thing. I've never worked with a showrunner <laughs> who sits behind the monitors oh my God, that's along with Pam Fryman mm -hmm. and will 
note almost every line if you want if you want the note he has a note for you of how to deliver and make sure that it's on track with what he has in his in his head mm -hmm. cuz these are all words that he's said especially my character Mitch is a direct representation of mm -hmm. of of DJ and and uh, his life and his morals and his views on on society as it sort of um, helped you get to know DJ better, having played him? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I was cast to play, I was, I was one of the last ones to be cast on the show. Uh, Tone Bell, who mm -hmm. plays my neighbor, uh, was cast first. He had to deal with NBC. He was on Whitney and then Bad Judge, and, and uh, so I had to deal with NBC, and this is the show that he chose. Uh, and being the last one on, uh, I, I felt like I had a lot of pressure. It was I, I felt like I wasn't there for the start of the process, so I didn't get to pick or, or help the process of finding my neighbor and finding my wife and, and finding right. my best friend. So I, I, I came in at the, the tail end of the process in a way. So I had a lot of catching up to do. So DJ and I spent uh, pretty much a week just going over the script and dissecting it and trying to figure out this character because inherently I am not Mitch. Mm -hmm because I think I'm a glass half empty kind of guy, okay. uh, or possibly right in the middle, where Mitch is a kind of a glass half full, which is mm -hmm. what, what DJ is. Mm -hmm. We think a lot alike, like I have the same moral values and the way that I view society. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitch, DJ, and myself, we all have that same view, mm -hmm. just go about it in a different way. So that was one of the toughest things for me in this role was how to, because I come from a point of like, well, that's kind of negative. And, and DJ's like, that's not negative. If, if you kind of spin it this way, it becomes very positive. Interesting. And so I had to learn that, that, uh, that sort of positive, positive spin on things mm -hmm. that uh, my character has as, long, as well as DJ. How about playing a, a father? Well, that's easy because I have four kids myself. Because you have myself. four yeah. kids. Does it so that was one of the things when I read the script uh, uh, as well, I felt that was very relevant to me. Mm -hmm. um, the stories that my character Mitch and his wife Tracy uh, go through are some of the things that I've had to experience in my life, you know, trying to find a babysitter so that you can finally go out and just have adult time mm -hmm. and not eat chicken nuggets and french right. fries and um, have an adult conversation. Mm -hmm. um, the importance of finding a babysitter and, and keeping one and, right. um, you know, do you hire the hot babysitter? <laughs> uh, and if she, if you, if you find out that your hot babysitter was actually, uh, has, has done porn before, do you keep her? Does that make her a bad babysitter, the fact that she's done porn? Right. Um, these has are it, all... Has it sparked conversations between you and, and your spouse? Well, no, I just know never to hire the hot babysitter. <laughs> uh, it's like, I, I, I don't, I, I, not that I had a lesson to learn, because I certainly didn't, I, I'm just a lot smarter so than my TV uh -huh. character when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, topics that we've brought up in the pilot as well is the use of the N-word. Mm -hmm. You know, is it, is it okay to use the N-word if you sing it? If it's in a song and Jay-Z says it and I'm singing one of his songs, can I say it? Uh, we bring up topics like that. Uh -huh. yeah. Is it? Well, that's just in the pilot, by the that, way. Right, that's yeah. just in the pilot. I was going to say, pilot. I didn't want to spoil anything. No, there's tons <laughs> of topics we bring, bring up. And how is that like sort of being able to have no filter yourself by exploring these topics and? Well, I mean, uh, in, in my real life, these are topics that I bring up and with my family and friends, I, I, I can have a free conversation and, and uh, I, I don't, I, I feel like I'm a very open-minded conservative in, in some areas of my life and liberal in others, um, but I don't, uh, I don't get too offended by um, certain topics. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have my opinion about them, but I can listen and, and understand other people's opinions. Uh, probably the, the fact that I'm a Pisces, I kind of just like... You're just like, what I'm like, whatever. <laughs> um, that's not my character, though. Mm -hmm. Mitch has a very... He's an ethics professor. He has a very uh, deliberate um, and sometimes exhausting point of view. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, these are conversations and topics that we're that I, that I bring up on a, on a daily basis with my f wife and my friends when we talk about things. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just refreshing to see it on television. Well, and I mean, you guys are talking about it, but so often like we see some of these differences of opinions like played out on social media. And I find that like sometimes when I strongly disagree with somebody sure. and find it offensive, 
the simple thing is just to mute them. Or <laughs> That's the thing. It's not a safe environment to yeah. do it on Twitter or, or some of the other social media yeah. platforms. It's not a safe environment. But you're with but your friends. If you're yeah. with your friends and you, you and I have a difference in opinions, I'm not going to judge you to the mm -hmm. point of where I have to put you down <laughs> right. or say some really bad things about you, which you can say on right. these platforms without sort of repercussions, which is a shame. But uh, that's a whole nother topic. Oh, yeah. But that's not what this show is. I mean, we're, we, we do have diverse opinions, and we, we will have on the show um, some conflict, but it's all rooted from a point of love and support. Um, and, and it's, it, again, what we want to stress, though, this is a comedy. Comedy, yes. <laughs> so they're not too heavy. Yeah. I mean, right. they're not too heavy, but they're very relevant. Uh, the very current topics that we bring up, but it's all in a very comedic, skewed way. I was going to ask, how was it going back to like a traditional, straightforward comedy after being, you know, on a sort of dramedy? A hybrid with comedy, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Franklin and Bash was sort of the comedy with the drama, um, and then everything before that I had done was very straight drama. Yeah. Uh, this is very on point, on the nose comedy. Um, sitcom hybrid style where we have four cameras uh, no audience mm -hmm. so it's shot much in the way that how I met your mother was this has been a challenge for me mm. I'm not sure I, I, I'm yeah what's I, the challenge it's because it's a unlike drama where you can kind of roll out of bed and you know slap your wardrobe on and get on camera and wow that's really dramatic mm -hmm. comedy is like a, f a dance between everyone and there's a there's a, a level of rhythm and timing and uh you know everyone's everyone's humor is different mm -hmm. in a way and so you're trying to you're trying to pinpoint and trying to hit things that'll that'll spark a a, right. a, a laugh or or a, a response and that 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 way of acting is very hard it's much like theater in a way mm -hmm. where you're you're always on and you're trying to you know, really engage with the audience. Um, I find it I find it challenging to do. Well, and was there any like um, hesitation about doing a comedy? Because we seem to be like there seems to be waves of you know comedy on network television where it's either on a high or it's on a low. Like comedies seem to be harder to break through than dramas in terms of finding an audience. Did that play? Was there any concern there of? No, I don't think there was any concern about that. I th I, my only concern was, will I be able to relate to this? Is this something that I would want to do for the next eight years? Mm -hmm. I always look at a project of, is, is this something that I could be happy with um, for the next eight years? Wow. Uh, and, and again, things like Frank, Franklin and Bash. I could have done that for eight years, except we were only doing 10 a, ten a <laughs> right. year. And it's, it's kind of a bummer. Right. Uh, and then audience couldn't find us and didn't know what night we are but now being on network it's like it's a stable uh it's a stable gig mm -hmm. uh you know it's it's we have a slot we hopefully we'll stay at 8 30s on fridays and people will know that that's a night for uh, our show and and we can do this for many many years what do you think about like where we are at tv the different components that now are at play the different things you have to do even just from five years ago things have changed significantly huge change uh -huh. um i don't know I, I i really don't know sort of what the geography is anymore of of, of television and mm -hmm. there's so many platforms to watch i'm 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 guilty i i, I don't watch shows on the day they air mm -hmm. and which is terrible because our show de depends, depends on, on that. it uh -huh. um, you know it depends on that rating that we're getting for that night but I think that's unfair in a way and I think it's an antiquated system mm -hmm. um, that we that we sort of are just tallying up the numbers for that night right I mean there's a live plus three and live plus yeah. seven all these things um, they're steadily like putting more emphasis on those, but it's still. But like, I think those are yeah, huge. They should yeah, put way more emphasis yeah, on it because yeah. a lot of people don't watch the show when it airs. Uh, I watch Netflix, so I wa I binge watch things. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, because of our busy schedule, I can't dedicate. I 
I can't say that I'm going to watch a show Wednesday nights at, at mm -hmm. nine o'clock right. every week. Especially when you got kids. Yeah, it's that's like the thing. they're you, taking over one, the TV. Yeah. One's still up and they haven't gone to bed and you know, one wakes up yeah. and you have to deal with that and I'm I'm pushing pause or I'm D V R you know, so it's I'm a slave sort of to the to the D V R so um, but yeah, the, the 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 format and the platforms have all changed. What was the last thing you binge watched? Last thing, well, we're into Narcos right now. Oh. Narcos, we're into, um, what we're Game of Thrones fans mm -hmm. and uh, waiting for House of Cards and Bloodline. What are the kids into? Do you keep track of what they're watching? Yeah, my 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 daughter is really into Gravity Falls. She waits every Monday for best <laughs> ever. Uh, and my son, he will watch uh, Pawn Stars and uh, things like that like he's he's more into xbox like he can't wait for the new battlefront to come out mm -hmm. <laughs> um so that that's that's his thing is it surreal to think that someday they'll be watching the stuff you've been on i feel like oh, they maybe, already have they already yeah have. yeah they've they've, they've they've watched on netflix some of the say by the bell when that when that was released i think last year on netflix um they had an opportunity to watch that show so they started watching and they watched they binged watched it for a good two weeks and then kind of went on Are they to like a, dad what's the big deal no, my son actually appreciated it, which he, he had an odd comment. He said, Dad, I really like the show. And I said, well, what? that wasn't the odd comment. By the way. <laughs> I said, uh, what do you like about it? He goes, it feels real. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was the odd comment. That mm -hmm. was the, the thing that I thought mm -hmm. feels real. He goes, yeah, the stories. I said, but, you know, obviously the the clothing and the look and the you know the, the characters phones. and the phones. I said that 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 that's not real. And he goes, no, but the stories. I, mm -hmm. I, those are At things that I that I sort of experience in my my life and going through school. It's like Wonder Years. Like still that, that was. I mean, if somebody said that that was that feels real. Yeah, that felt real. Yeah. that felt like more of a real show. But it, the, the 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 odd thing was that he thought Say by the Bell was felt more real than some of well, the other like shows he watches. You go through the same. I think only the breaking down the wall, fourth wall, might have been the only yeah. thing. But yeah, that was fun. Um, how about the role that Twitter plays in sort of drumming up buzz even more so than these types of um, promotional interviews? Sometimes I feel like I just don't have the energy, enough <laughs> energy. I have energy to tweet and I have energy to Instagram. I just don't feel like I'm one of those people that has enough energy. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, it, it's definitely a commitment. Like the people that are good at it, they do it. And I don't know if they have a team, they probably have a team behind them. Um, I have yet to sort of get that team mm -hmm. going. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like if the show becomes, continues to become successful and, and uh, has legs that we may need to have yeah. some help. Uh, because I can't keep up with like the three yeah. Majors, you know, the well, Instagram, you, Facebook, like, Twitter. You'll pressure to be funny, and that's the other thing. Like yeah. I, I, like people say, well, why don't you tweet more? And I say, well, when I'm working, I'm working. Mm -hmm. um, unless I'm at an event, which during the work work week we don't go out that much. Uh, and then when I'm home, I'm not going to tweet like, oh, just made mac and cheese. <laughs> Amazing. That hashtag. would get so many retweets. It would not. <laughs> it would. You're being way too kind. <laughs> but uh, you know, I live a I live a normal life, mm -hmm. uh, relatively normal. What's mm -hmm. normal? But I live a standard life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I have a great wife and a great home to come home to, and great children. And uh, I've created an environment that that sort of leads to sort of a life that mm -hmm. blends in. Right. So I don't tweet a lot about my, my personal life because it's rather boring to some people. Are you on Instagram? I am on Instagram. Yeah. That too. But again, you, you post a picture and it's got to be the picture. It has to be the picture. And yes. it has to have a witty quote underneath. Yes. Right uh, filter and everything. I don't filter. You don't? None well, of my good. photos are filtered. Yeah. None of them. Very authentic. <laughs> yeah. I may regret that at some point. <laughs> they always pop back up. Um, well, back to Truth Be Told, we're seeing NBC um, play with doing the live um, format. format with Undateable, which yep. seems like, that seems crazy to me, if I was an actor it on is. that. Would you, do you hope to ever? No. No. <laughs> Just no. No. Uh, no. <laughs> no, what they're doing is, is pretty hardcore. Yes. Uh, my hat goes off to them because that is a 
hard format mm -hmm. to sustain week after week. Uh, I think it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. I would love to do like the live episode of, of Truth Be Told. Just one. Sure, just one. Just one. To, to, to do it week after week, it's it, it is a grueling schedule. But to do one would be great. To do Truth Be Told musical, to do, you know, all those yeah, kind of yeah. one offs. One offs. Mm -hmm. be fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, but to do a live format at week after week is, is too hardcore for me. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you back about the state of television? We're seeing a lot of 90s nostalgia. We're seeing reboots and remakes and all this stuff. And you know, sometimes you get those comments like, there's no original ideas anymore. But what do you make of what we're seeing about this 90s nostalgia? Like Nick, Nickelodeon's bringing back all these you know, shows. Fuller House. Yeah, some yeah. Fuller House with Netflix. What do you make of all of this? Do you understand it? Can you understand the appeal of it? I, I can understand the appeal of it because it's the same recycled stories that played before they aired. Mm -hmm. um, there's not. There, there's not a everything whole borrows. catalog. I mean, everything every, everything borrows from one thing to another. Even even films are, unless it's a based on a true story. Mm -hmm. um, there's, it's very hard to come up with a new idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Fuller House works, in my opinion, because it was a family mm -hmm. that eventually grows up, and it, you can do a show about that, that family. family. Um, same with the ball, I think it would be tougher to do. And one of the, not, not that I'm opposed to ever doing, and I think that fans can see that I've, I've embraced the character. Yeah. It's not about that at all. But I think it'd be hard for us, unless it was a parody, mm -hmm. to mm. reprise those characters. Like on the Fallon show. Yeah, the Fallon it was, thing. Um, it was a very skit type yeah. feel parody of what we mm -hmm. did. Uh, and and I, don't, I don't know if that could play as, as, as much as I think the fans would like to see us all together and doing so, I just don't know how you would sustain that week after mm -hmm. week. Cause it, it would be like, it would be a, uh, I don't know, it's like the Brady Bunch movie. <laughs> yeah. You know, the Brady Bunch movie, it, it, it was fun to watch that. And that, that may work, a film, but I don't know if you could bring our show or back. Or just Zach and Kelly catching up with them. Zach and Kelly catching up, I could see something like that. But again, that, I don't know if that would be a, a, a show that you could sustain. Well, and you guys got sort of a remake early on because we got Saved by the Bell, the new class, shortly after. Um, Which is basically just a new class, yeah, correct? Yeah. yeah. So I kind of want to see a reboot or a sequel to NYPD Blue. Well, NYPD Blue, I've had this conversation recently, should still have been on the air yeah. now to this day. There's no reason that we, could, that we had to cancel that show because it is no different than Law & Order mm -hmm. or SVU. These are, these are characters that I think could have gone. The question is, would the show have been as powerful without Dennis Franz? Mm. And Dennis was the nucleus of that, right. of that show. Um, who knows? I, I, I don't know. But in, in, in working with Dennis was one of the highlights of my career so far. Mm -hmm. Would you still have been on that show? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my God. There was no reason to leave that show. Like, like, we did 12, I did four seasons with that. And uh, it was their 12th season, and I'm like, guys, come on, we can keep doing this. Come on, let's just yeah. keep going. <laughs> Do you have any funny stories? Because that it was the was, best gig ever. It that was, the was one of the, the crucial like shows growing up for me to yeah. see, and I would watch it with my mom. And you know, it was very adult, obviously, but she would shield me from parts I shouldn't see. But sure. it was like, yeah, it was that and ER. I think were like one of my top. But do you have any stories behind the scenes stories from that? No, just that. The, the the memories of that crew and the cast and the scripts that we were given every week are all so positive. It's very, it's very, it'll be very hard to top that process again mm -hmm. uh, and that particular project. Um, Dennis, I, I just learned so many things. Yeah, as, as a human being, as an actor, um, he, he was a, a, a special, and still is, a, a special uh, individual. Such, a, such an honor to have worked with him. Did you ever think you would find or get to be playing a character <laughs> like that? No. After no. what you came off with? Because no. you, you often get, like, when people are known for a certain show, they sort of get locked in or pigeonholed. Yeah. Um, talk yeah. about jumping. Well, 
you know, it had been, I, I think I was you cast had other in shows. that in 2000. I, I think I was cast uh, late in the season 2000. Um, and I had other shows. I had a couple shows on WB that had run uh, consecutively. Bay. Hyperion Bay was one of them. DC was another one. Uh, which was Dick Wolf's show, which was I thought was going to go for a while too, given that pedigree of yeah. Dick Wolf and John right. August was right. wrote that. Um, before that, I, I I was you know trying to break the the mold of of the Zach Morris uh, role that I had played, and so when that came about, uh, the story behind that was uh, a Kim Delaney show. Um, oh boy, what was that called? It was Tom Everett Scott. Anyway, she had broken off NYPD Blue to go do right. her show. Um, you know, it's almost hitting me too what it was called. Uh, but anyway, so I went in to read for that for show, that show for that show, mm -hmm. and uh, Stephen Bochco was in the room, and uh, he says you're you're really good, and I was like, oh, thanks. You know, <laughs> it's just a weird thing for yeah. somebody to say like you're really good. You right. Know, it's like, I you, know. You either yeah. have the I know, <laughs> yeah, which yeah, mm -hmm. or you go like, oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. He goes, uh, well, I wish I'd love to work with you in, in the future. And I said, oh, amazing. You know, like, just let just me know. Me yeah, yeah I'm, I'll be waiting. And uh, true to his word, two weeks later, he said, uh, how would you like to be on NYPD Blue? I was like, OK, you know. But again, it was one of those roles that I hadn't read for. Mm -hmm. I'd never played a cop. I'd never played a cop from New York mm -hmm. uh, on a show with a built in that yeah. degree of, of uh, a built-in audience and that degree of that pedigree that, yeah. that, that was uh, uh, and, and to play Dennis's partner oh and by the way uh, Stephen I don't know if you've known this but I was a child star just like Rick Schroeder was a child <laughs> right, star right. who came before me so like what, what's going on here he didn't care he just <laughs> he wants actors that he believes in and, and uh, can he feels that are, are right for the show uh -huh. it was an amazing opportunity it was one of those things that uh, I, I've never been that nervous to walk on a set for the first time. I was time. gonna say, was that having not read for it? Like, do you know? Do you know if I? I don't know if I can do this, but you do. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I'll follow your lead. That's, yeah. that's amazing. We could have a whole other chat about oh NYPD Blue. Yeah, it was, it was so great. I wish I, that if if you said that that was being remade, and if there was a spot for me, I would jump, jump on it. it. Jump on it. All right, let me. But I know Stephen. Stephen has other things, and he's doing really well now with Murder in the First. So. Let me try to email him. I don't have his email, but I'll find oh, it. Oh, I do. I can give it to you. Yeah. I can give you a cell. Just call cell. He's fine that way. He, he, he pick right up. Well, let's end with some more talk about Truth Be Told. Okay. Talk to me about, you know, playing Mitch and being married to Vanessa Lachey. Is Nick giving you, like, <laughs> keep your distance kind of cues, or what's going on there? No, Nick's a good guy. We, uh, as, a, as a cast, we, we all get along really, really well. We just spent the weekend at... Universal at Halloween Horror Nights. If you look at our Instagram and our Twitter, I'd say I saw the Universal yeah, Instagram. But, but and sixty percent, like, I think, of our Instagram and Twitter is dedicated to what we're doing with each other. <laughs> um, You're not sick of each other yet. Not sick of each other yet. Uh, you know, Vanessa, Nick's uh, three-year-old, uh, plays soccer with my my two-year-old at oh. the same league. So we go. We see them every weekend now. Um, we go to each other's homes, and, and uh, they are, they were invited to our son's birthday, and we go to their son's birthday. So we're a very tight knit group. Um, Nick and I have played golf together, uh, but no, there's no like you know, <laughs> hey, uh, we we have very understanding partners, mm -hmm. and it's it's tough. It's tough what we do for a living, you know. Right. But how how do you think people should watch on Friday? With the volume turned way up. No DVRing. No, no DVRing. Uh, clear Save the room. Save that for later. Save that for later. Save that for the other shows. But watch <laughs> Undateable Live and our show. It's only an hour. It's only an, it's hour. Only an hour, and it's at eight o'clock. Actually, you don't even need to watch. Just turn your TV on. Just turn your TV. On. Just turn your TV on. <laughs> leave it on from eight until ten. Uh huh. On NBC, and uh, you should just do that all week long. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, it. Wednesday, Thursday. Just leave it on from eight to ten. You don't even need to watch it. And guess what? NBC, they've just, I've just got this in. They will pay for your electricity bill. <laughs> they will pay, right? I could use that I, right that's now. That's what I just got in my ear. Will they provide AC they will, too? They will not provide AC in your car. 
<laughs> not in my car. No, not yes. your car. Mark but they, knows about they my will, troubles. They will provide AC at home. Okay. If you turn your TV on. Okay. Yeah, this is NBC, big company. And they we, <laughs> are owned by GE. I don't know if people know this. So electricity. Comcast now, right? <laughs> Is it Comcast? We're not at Save by the Bell days. Oh, that's right. <laughs> see what I see. I, I don't even know. So what much I'm has about. changed. So much has changed. Will you be live tweeting? Should people live tweet with you? We are going to be live tweeting. Uh, we are going to be live tweeting for the East Coast feed, okay. which uh, we get all the live. We get all tweeting. the good stuff. They get all the good stuff. But you know what? For the West Coast feed, we will live tweet with you as well because the Truth Be Told cast is going to have a party. A private party just for ourselves. <laughs> um, don't try to crash. Don't it. try to crash it. It'll be on the Universal lot. But we're just gonna have a private party with the cast and crew, and uh, we'll we'll live tweet. We'll probably do some periscoping. Oh, very cool. Do some periscoping. See, periscope. Periscope. Yeah. You're all the rage. We'll, uh, we'll we'll do some fun stuff on that night, um, and we'll be with the Undateable live cast to live tweet during the East Coast feed. So watch NBC. It'll be a fun fun event. Well, Mark Paul, thank you so much for, for taking me. the time. It was a pleasure and. For those on Periscope, thanks for tuning in. And everyone else, um, Truth Be Told premieres on Friday at 8.30 p.m. or 7.30 Central. All right, guys. Have a good one. Thank you.